Hello everyone, uh, just a quick disclaimer before I get into the video. Uh, this was originally supposed to be an all-in-one linear interpolation and Bezier curves video, but it turned out to be way too much work, too much editing, and just overall too long of a video. So I'm going to be splitting this up into multiple parts. I don't know how many parts yet, uh, but this video is going to be the first part in this kind of mini-series that I'm doing, um, which I guess will be on uh, making curves and animations and stuff like that. So this video is strictly just going to be focusing on linear interpolation, uh, very much for beginners. So if you know nothing about linear interpolation, this is a great start. If you do know some, then maybe you'll still learn a few new things. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's get into the video. All right, we're going to go ahead and start things off here by talking about linear interpolation, also referred to as LERP, which you may or may not have come across before. Um, and all linear interpolation is, is just finding discrete values that lay on a line that's between two other values. And those values could be numbers, vectors, or really any mathematical object that contains numbers. Okay, so we're going to start off by interpolating between two numbers. Let's say I have an initial value of 10 and a final value of 20. Now the way we're going to find our in-between values is by defining some percentage of this number range by using 10 as our lowest value, 0%, and 20 as our highest value, 100%. This way we can generalize for any number range where we want to choose our in-between value. For example, 50% will always be the number exactly halfway between these two numbers. In this case, it's 15. This also makes it easier to parameterize this data and create a function based on the chosen percentage. For example, let's define our LERP function as L of P, where P is the percentage. Using our initial value of 10 and final value of 20, L of 50% is equal to 15. L of 0% would be equal to 10, and L of 100% would be equal to 20. Now for the sake of computing, it's going to be a lot easier if we format the percentage as its actual decimal value. For example, 50% is really just 50 over 100, which simplifies to 1 over 2, which is really just 0 0.5. Doing this, we now know that our P for percentage is always going to be some number between 0 and 1. So going back to our previous examples, L of 50% would be L of 0 0.5, which would still be 15. L of 0% would be L of 0, which would be 10. And L of 100% would be L of 1, which would be 20. And of course, you can already figure how this works for all other values of P. So now that we know what values to expect from our LERP function and how it behaves, how do we assemble it? Well, let's consider what it means to take a percentage of any number range, A and B, where A is the initial value and B is the final value. For starters, we want to know the size of the number range. We can get the size by looking at the difference between A and B. Of course, difference in math meaning subtract, we get its size by doing B minus A, or the absolute value of A minus B. So this tells us the size of the number range, but not where it is. Remember, the range starts at A which means any number in the range is going to be a plus some percentage of its size. And that's really it. This is the actual LERP function as it's used in computing. Now I'm just going to simplify the expression with some basic algebra real quick to show you its formal version, but this is the exact same expression. Well, that was a lot of editing. <laughs> I don't think you guys realize how much editing that actually took on my part. I was here forever. Okay, anyway, uh, we're getting into the live part of the video now, so there's no voiceovers here. Uh, it's going to be a little bit slower, so feel free to skip ahead. I'll leave some timestamps on the screen. Um, but anyway, we're going to be implementing the uh, uh, the LERP function that we just that I just went over um, in Roblox Lua. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a script here, and all we're going to do is just make a simple case of uh, one part being uh, lerped from one position to another. And of course, we are in 3D space here. We're going to be using uh, vector 3. So this is a example of using a, a vector instead of a, a scalar, or a, just a regular number like I did in my previous example. So we're going to do... Uh, we're just going to define the function right away. Um, call it lerp, and of course we're going to have our point 0, our point 1, and we're going to have our uh, percentage, or I'm just going to call it t. Uh, and the equation was um, that it's going to return 
uh, 0 0.0 times 1 minus t plus 0 0.1 times t. And that's our lerp function. So let's see. I'm just going to create some parts here. Have uh, Let's see. We'll make a red part for our destination or ending point. And I'm probably going to want to anchor that. So I have the red point. We'll call that stop. Make another one called start. And we'll make that green. And we'll just offset it slightly on each axis so you can see exactly how it works in 3D space. And I'm just going to call this lerp. And let's get the parts. So start with workspace dot start stop equals base dot stop. I apologize for the left keyboard. Um, and now we're going to need a uh, kind of projectile like part to pass between them. Um, and I'm not going to make it in the script because I'm lazy. So I'm just going to make another one here and we'll just name it step. And we'll make it blue. Why not? Is that blue? It's teal. Make it dark blue. All right. Full step equals workspace dot step. And I'm just going to run a quick loop. Uh, it's not going to be anything efficient, but that's fine because this isn't a video on animating. So uh, we're just going to make a for loop. One through... 100 iterations, um, and remember that uh, we're going to be using i as kind of our t value here, but t has to be uh, a number between 0 and 1, so we're actually going to want to divide our i by 100, so we're going to just make a new variable called t, do i divided by 100, so over the course of this iteration, uh, we'll get T being uh, ranging from zero to one. Um, is my cat dying? I apologize, guys. There's so many noises going on in the background right now. It's very distracting. Um, okay, so now we're going to go ahead and get our uh, lerp to data, which is going to be um, a vector because uh, P0 and P1 are going to be our 3D positions of this green part and this red part. And so since uh, we, we're dealing with vectors here and these this uh, P0 and P1 are going to be vectors, uh, that means that the rest of the information here are 1 minus T and T are acting as scalars, which is just a fancy word for saying number. Um, but these numbers are scaling these vectors by a certain quantity. Um, and that's allowed. You can multiply vectors by regular numbers. All it does is it just multiplies all of the components of the vector by whatever that scalar is. So uh, we're going to do, 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 do uh, new, well, we'll call it, we'll call it updated pose for position is equal to lerp. And we're going to input the start parts position and the stop stop dot position and we're going to put in t for our time step in a way okay uh add some wait time so that we can actually see it move again not going for efficiency here if you are interested in animating this is not the way to do it <laughs> uh so and I will probably make a separate... I, I think I have made separate videos on that before, but um, I, I'll probably make some new ones because uh, they're probably kind of outdated. Uh, anyway, so this should work. I'm pr oh, wait, we have to position the actual part. So step.cframe is equal to cframe.new. 
updated pose. Um, and this should work. So we should have a hundred steps, which means that uh, this invisible line here from this green part to this red part, there's an invisible line, and that line is going to be chopped up into hundredths, which means a hundred different uniform, uniformly spaced apart segments, and the part is going to be uh, kind of shaking away along each one of those hundredths of a step. Um, yeah. That should work. Hopefully there's no mistakes. And there it is. It's just shuffling along there. It's going to do that a hundred times before it actually gets to the red part, and it should be the exact position as the red part. Ooh, that's a cool graphics glitch right there. That's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that is a Lua implementation of the LERP function. Um, I hope that was somewhat beneficial.